So I know that the length of this video may seem a little intimidating, but I've sectioned it off into chapters so that you can watch whatever it is you're interested in. I tested out having the Cricut in this spot, but I think I'm going to do a little DIY with this dresser here. Hopefully it works out. But here's a little cat area that I made for the kitties. So they're going to be my co-workers during the day. They mostly nap during the day, so they just hang out inside the tower and don't really play with the toys that often. Later in the video, I'm going to do that DIY that I mentioned to this little mini dresser. I'm going to be making some wood studs and stamping some bracelets for some orders that I need to get out. I'll be packing those orders and then I'll be testing out a new laser machine that's about a sixth of the cost of my Glowforge. So definitely check that out because it is worth it. So I tested out having my Cricut on the riser stand that I put on the packing table and I do like it and it works but a lot of you guys voted that you preferred the riser stand on this desk so that I could organize my stamping stuff better and have extra workspace. You can see there that I have something right now. Um, I'm testing out an X tool laser machine that was sent to me so I'll be sharing that later in this video but someone had a pretty genius idea to add wheels to this mini dresser that I have from Ikea so then I can just pull it forward a little bit when I cut on the Cricut and I just thought that was really smart so I ordered some <laughs> casters from Amazon and I think I'm gonna try that out so I got these and they have stoppers on them in case I don't want it rolling around everywhere. But it's on carpet, so <laughs> I don't think it'll move around that much. So yeah, I'm gonna install these real quick with a new drill my husband got. <laughs> so let's see how that works out. So you can kind of see that this dresser does not have a bottom, it just has this front piece of wood right here. So I just have two pieces of wood, they're two by four by two feet, and I'm just going to put these on the bottom, one kind of in the front, one towards the back, and that's what I'll put these feet on. The only thing is that they're just a tad too wide. I want it to be this length. So I'm just going to saw that real quick so that I can wedge it in between and screw it in from the sides. All right, I just chopped these two pieces. Now, they'll fit the fridge here. So now I just need to screw them in from the sides.
けども。
So a company called Makeblock reached out to me and offered to send me their laser machine. Uh, they sent me the X-Tool D1 and I was really excited because it's a much more affordable laser and it seems to have a lot of capabilities and a lot of new things that I've never been able to do with my current laser machine. Um, it's under a thousand dollars right now <laughs> and my machine I spent a good six thousand dollars so if you've been interested in laser engraving and cutting and you just haven't had the budget to get a machine like a Glowforge then this one's a really good option and what got me really excited about this one hi Ferrero he wants to say hello you're gonna I'm gonna have to put you outside soon when I'm cutting stuff. <laughs> what got me really excited about this machine is that they have risers. So it comes with two sets of 45 millimeter risers and you can attach them to each other and then you put them on the bottom of all four legs as you need it or just one if you need one but it can cut things that are up to five and a half inches in height and that's really exciting because with my current machine you can only do half an inch when you have the uh, crumb tray on it and if you remove the crumb tray you can only do things that are up to two inches tall so you can do much taller things with this one and Oh, Ferrero. <laughs> and it also has a rotary attachment accessory. So this is really exciting because you can put cylindrical items on it like cups and tumblers and you can engrave on them and it'll rotate it as it's engraving. So I popped by Target and I got a few really cheap uh, coffee cups in a stainless steel bottle because it can also engrave on stainless steel. I didn't get pure stainless steel but it can actually engrave directly on uncoated stainless steel which my laser machine cannot. My laser machine can only do coated metals so it's really exciting that I could do stainless steel. I even tested engraving on my bracelet blanks which are pure stainless steel and it worked. So today I'm just gonna try out the rotary attachment but a few other specs of the machine it's a 10 watt dual laser which is equivalent to a 15 watt laser the engraving bed is 17 by 16 inches so that's great because the glowforge bed is 12 by 20 inches and it can engrave about 11 to 19 and a half inches so this one is larger it has a really fine laser point at 0 0.08 millimeters so it can do really high quality engravings it can cut materials that are up to 10 millimeters deep it can cut and engrave all of the usual materials and can also engrave on pure stainless steel. It comes with a basic software that you can use with it called Laserbox Basic, but you can also use a common laser engraving software called Lightburn. It doesn't come completely set up, but it's really easy to set up. It's basically just putting in a bunch of screws and adjusting the tightness of the belts on the machine. You can use it with Wi-Fi or you can use it with a USB. So that's really exciting because you don't have to have Wi-Fi to be able to use it. You can just connect it to your computer and use it when you have no internet, which I can't do with my Glowforge. I have to have Wi-Fi and I have to access the app via the internet. I've also noticed that because the laser is so precise, it creates a lot less burn marks. And what's really exciting is that they actually have an air compressor type accessory that you can attach to it that will blow air as it's engraving. So then you don't even need to mask your materials. And I really want to try that eventually because you guys know if you see me making my ornaments or my studs or keychains or anything that I'm always masking my materials because you get this really yucky burn residue on wood when you don't mask it. But I try to be more eco-friendly and tape isn't recyclable so I would love to be able to not mask things. But as you can see from this little test engraving there's not many burn marks on it so that's really exciting that even without that attachment that it's pretty clean. So yeah, that's just a few things about this laser machine. I'm going to link it down below, but I'm kind of envious of anyone who gets this as their first laser machine just because it's so affordable and it's capable of so many things. But today I'm just going to 
test out this rotary attachment and engrave a couple designs on the stuff I got from Target. So I got this water bottle from Target. It says that it's stainless steel and it's coated and it was only six dollars. So I'm glad I could find affordable things <laughs> to engrave on just in case I mess it up my first time. I also found these little coffee cups that are also stainless steel on the outside and I got two of these and they were only three dollars each so all in all I spent twelve dollars to test this out <laughs> and hopefully I don't ruin all of them. So first I'm gonna attach these legs because when I put this bottle here it's gonna be pretty tall same with these guys um, I'm not sure how this one's gonna turn out because you can see this is not a perfect cylinder it's kind of a cone shape so um, I'm gonna try it out anyways and see how it does I have two of them so I don't mind if I mess it up <laughs> remove these little rubber bottoms and I guess I'll put it on this one so that it doesn't slide around. So there's actually this little lever here that you put down to set this part of the laser because if you loosen this screw you can adjust it up and down so you put this down to touch your material and adjust this so I'm just gonna slide this under and I'm gonna put it on the highest part of the cup So now that the little lever is touching the material, I can tighten this screw. Alright, so it comes with this little cable, so it seems that you just attach one end to the attachment right here, and then the other end to a little spot on the laser machine. So the only downside is that I don't have a grid to be able to see if this piece is perfectly parallel with the laser and you know just perfectly aligned. So I did see a video online where someone just placed a material right here and then used like a straight edge tool to line it up so i'm gonna go grab those things so i can get it as straight as possible but luckily the design that i have to put on here is kind of like at an angle so it's not really a design that you'll tell if it's really crooked <laughs> all right so this is just some wood that make block sent me and then i have my tool here so I'm just going to press this against this wall here so that it's flat and then I'm going to grab my tool and then move the attachment so that it's flush against these. Okay, so hopefully that's straight. I was kind of brainstorming other ways that you could do that and if you have like a base material that you always keep under the X tool you could just have it score or engrave a rectangle or kind of like actually measure this tool and create a shape that is exactly the same shape and then have it score or engrave it first and then every time you use this then you could just place it right there. So this laser head, it's perfectly fine to move it exactly where you need to and it has like a red crosshair or a dot so that you can find the center so you would just measure whatever you're engraving and then mark where you want it to engrave and line it up but my engraving is just going to basically 
cover all of it so I'm just gonna measure to make sure that it's not larger than the entire height of the mug so I think I want my design to be about two and a half inches so I just have the laser box basic app open here I'm just using that for now because I've never used Lightburn, but I'll probably use Lightburn eventually. So I'm just going to upload my design. And I'm just going to do this Life Happens Cafecito Helps design that my mom created. <laughs> so it just has the outline of it right now. So I'm going to do fill so that it engraves the whole thing. And I need to figure out how to change this to inches. So I'll just measure in millimeters for now. So the two and a half inches. I'll do about 65 millimeters. So 65. Oops. I gotta hit the little lock button first. Hit the lock button and now height to 65 millimeters. And then there's some material options here. So although it's a stainless steel cup, it's coated. So I'm gonna select coated metal and hopefully automated settings will work. All right, so I plugged in the machine. Let's turn it on. I have it connected via USB to my MacBook right now. So it found it right here, so I'm gonna select it. Since my cup is going to be facing this way, I'm gonna rotate the design, hopefully that's right. <laughs> so rotate it, hit the little start button. So there's a little laser spot feature. Let me move you closer to my monitor. There's a little laser spot feature, so I just select turn it on, and then you see this little blue dot here. I'm just going to move it to the middle of the design, and then the little blue dot shows on the laser now. So. If I put my cup, I can kind of find the middle right there. And then over here, there's a little toggle that says cylinder working. So hopefully <laughs> that's what I press. But the cool thing is that there's a little framing button. So when you hit framing, it'll kind of show you where it's going to engrave on your material. So let me press that. Oh, it rotated it. Okay, I hope that shape <laughs> isn't wonky and it rotates the body while it's engraving. Yeah, it looks a little bumpy. Yeah, I'm not sure this will work. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not a perfect slope. Okay, whatever. It's a test. It'll probably be messed up and the bottle will be better, but let's just try it. So I'm gonna hit start after I put on my glasses. So it comes with these little glasses that you need to wear while it's running. And now I've hit start. So I figured this was going to happen because <laughs> it wasn't perfectly flat, kind of like a cone shape. And then I noticed it's kind of like got this weird taper on the edge, but I just wanted to see the quality of the engraving. So because it was bumpy as it was turning, the letters are kind of all over the place. <laughs> but it looks like the quality of each letter actually looks really good. So let me turn this off real quick so you can hear me.
So it engraved more at the top because this is the height that I set it to. So since it's kind of like this cone shape, it didn't engrave as deeply. But let me wet it and use a magic eraser to clean it up to see what the part that did engrave ends up looking like. So I'm gonna just spray it with some water. Then I got my magic eraser. So I'm really impressed with how cleanly it engraved and even the bottom part here, even though it was further away from the laser, it still did a pretty good job engraving it. It kind of gave it like a gradient effect, which is cool. But yeah, if this little cup was perfectly flat, it would have done much better. But I think for a $3 test and a piece that I can keep engraving on it, uh, to test other designs. I think it turned out pretty good So let me just engrave a another design on the bottle since I know that this is for sure flat So I'm gonna engrave one of my potty mouth sticker designs on here. It'll be this one right here So it'll look something like that This one is about 80 millimeters wide almost, so I think I might do like 90 on the bottle from like here to here, 90. Maybe I can engrave multiple designs on the bottle, that'd be cool. So from this line to where it starts to taper, it's about 150 millimeters so I'll put a mark at the 75 millimeter point so I know where I want the center of my design to be so there's my little mark and I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did with the last one okay, framing okay that looks good now so Let's hit start and then do a time lapse. I rotated the design the wrong way and I just noticed that was about to be a complete fail. Cancel. Let's rotate it the other way. So I just realized that I've been rotating it myself, but there's actually a little rotate degree thing. So like this one I want it facing the other way so I'm just gonna do 180 there we go let's start it okay so it looks like this one's perfect Excited. <laughs> Clearly. Okay, so let me turn this off. Move it out of the way. This metal looks like it's a little darker. Okay, so um just the the eyes were off for some reason, the dot of the eyes, but otherwise it looks really good. I'm not sure why that happened. Let's clean it off. It looks so good. It's so pretty. So I missed uh, when I did the, these two dots, so I'm not sure what happened, if it came in at the end and, and got out of place, but just look how crisp the engraving is and those lines it's so good it's so clear look at those lines i'm really impressed with that it looks really pretty so there's an example of that so if you wanted to have like a, a wrap on it it could do a complete 360 around your entire bottle 
and with the help of the risers we were able to engrave on this because this is about two and a half inches tall so you would have to remove the crumb tray on the glow forge and it still wouldn't be tall enough because without the crumb tray you can only engrave stuff that's up to two inches so that's super exciting if you want to engrave on bottles and do complete wraparound designs and have it rotate for you then that's a really awesome option i just went downstairs to show nick and he's so impressed they look so good it's so exciting um even though the eyes messed up i'll have to troubleshoot that but I'm just excited that you could engrave the entire bottle, like do a 360 wrap with whatever design. And I'm definitely gonna try that out. And these bottles I got from Target, they were only $6. So yeah, I'm so impressed. It looks so good. Um, so I'm just gonna engrave this design on a piece of wood so that you can see how it does engraving wood since that's one of the most common materials that I engrave on. And I'll do it without masking tape so that you can see how much less burn marks it has when engraving on wood. All right, it's done. It took about 11 and a half minutes. And it looks so good. So there's how it turned out. And the quality is so good and it's dark so it's a nice contrast. The lines look really good. There's no pixelation. And you can see that there's virtually no burn marks. Which is quite impressive for having zero masking. So just for shits and giggles I'm going to engrave the same design over here but on the Glow Forge, so you can see a comparison. I usually, for larger designs, I'll use the SD graphic setting on the Glow Forge just because it's a lot faster and looks pretty good, but to get this result, it's probably better if I try it in HD, so I'll just engrave it on the Glow Forge in the Cherry Plywood setting with HD. So like always on the Glowforge, you don't need to move this part of the Glowforge at all because there's a little camera here, so you can actually center your design using the camera. Alright, so I was going to do the HD graphic setting because I thought that that's what would get this result, but... I just hit print and it says it's gonna take 35 minutes and I'm not gonna wait 35 minutes. <laughs> so uh, scratch that, I'm gonna do the SD graphic setting and see how that turns out and hopefully it's a lot shorter than 35 minutes. All right, I changed it to the SD graphic setting and it says it's gonna take 14 minutes and 42 seconds. So it's still a little longer than the Xtool D1 but Let's see how it turns out, and let me do a little time lapse of it. Okay, so the Glowforge is finally done. <laughs> Let's check it out. So you can see what I mean by the burn marks that the Glowforge creates, even though it has a very loud fan. Usually I have to mask my wood. So to get rid of this, I would just have to sand it out. And this is the SD graphic recommended setting for cherry plywood on the Glowforge. It has more of the traditional engraved wood look. Um, I could probably get it darker if it was the HD graphic setting or if I just bumped up the power. You could also get it darker by making it 
go slower but it was already 14 minutes so it was quite long so so if you like higher contrast like this the x tool did a really good job and if you like it lighter like this you could probably just reduce the power on the x tool but yeah that's just a side by side comparison this was from a machine that is less than a thousand dollars right now and this was from my six thousand dollar machine so the X tool I'm just I'm so impressed <laughs> I'm just shocked honestly so I hope you enjoyed watching me test out the X tool laser machine I'm uh, really glad that they sent it to me to test it out and share it with you guys and I'm glad that I can share an option that's a lot more feasible for home makers and small business owners so again there's the comparison uh, the X tool and the Glowforge. This is how the bottle turned out. I need to figure out what happened to the eyes, but I'm really impressed with how it turned out. And they have their honeycomb panel on pre-order, so I don't have that yet, but I'm waiting on that so that I can actually cut things because it can cut up to 10 millimeters, so I'm really curious to try that. And I was talking about the compressor before, to reduce burn marks but it already looks great so i might not need it so if you want to check this out i'll link it down below they actually have an enclosed laser machine that is a 40 watt laser machine which is the same wattage as the glowforge basic and glowforge plus <laughs> and the engraving cutting area is over 11 by 19 inches so it's about the same size as the Glowforge and that one is on pre-order for $3,999 and it also comes with a rotary attachment so that you can engrave cylindrical items so if you want to check that out check that out but obviously I haven't tried that yet but for the time being I'm just excited to have two laser machines and so when it comes to the really busy holiday season hopefully I can find settings that will result in the same exact look with both machines so that I can have two employees <laughs> instead of one I'll see you guys in the next video bye